Welcome back to Upfront. They've already checked a lot of the boxes on their legislative to-do list, so what's left for Republican lawmakers in the remaining weeks of this year? The state Senate is back on the floor Tuesday, and Senate Majority Leader Scott Fitzgerald joins us now on Upfront. Senator, it's good to have you back on the program. Good to be with you again. So before we get to the legislative agenda, quick question about Foxconn. You've heard Democrats say we would like to see the details of the Foxconn contract before the Wisconsin Economic Development Corporation Board votes on this. Should they see the details? I think they should. Um, you know, we had this deadline that was imposed on the legislature that said we had to have a bill kind of across the finish line and to the governor before that September 30th date. But there's a lot of heavy lifting that had to happen after that legislative initiative was passed and signed into law. That's what they're doing. I mean, that's what uh, Director Hogan and WEDC is looking for is, you know, are we making sure that we've got everything buttoned down? Uh, I think that's wise. I think it's good that we have both majority and minority members of the legislature on WEDC asking tough questions. I think that should happen right up until that, that contract is signed. But I still believe we're on track. I know there's a little bit of kind of uh, hand-wringing going on, mm -hmm. saying, shouldn't this be done already? Shouldn't this be in place? But no, you want to make sure you do it right, and I think that's what WDC and the administration is doing right now. So you're on board saying, let's see the full details of the contract before there's any vote. That's, that's the right decision in your mind. Yeah, I mean, um, up to a practical uh, point. I mean, there's going to be some things, I think, that ultimately are not going to be able to be completely nailed down. But, um, you know, for the most part, yeah, we need to know what the major pieces are before they move forward. Let's talk a little bit about what you uh, still have to do on the legislative agenda. Uh, Speaker Voss was on this program last week. He talked about mining as being a priority. Do you expect lining, mining legislation to move ahead? I do. I mean, we're still working on uh, the votes in the Senate. Uh, talked to the Speaker this week about it. He still believes that uh, he's in a position to move on it. So... There's a little bit of discussion between the houses on who should take that up first, but uh, still feel optimistic that we're going to get there on this. You know, this uh, so far has been an interesting discussion, especially for some of us who, you know, years ago voted for a mining moratorium right. uh, with, with some concerns about what was going to go on with metallic mining in northern Wisconsin. And now I think with the technology and with the shifts and changes we've seen, uh, not only uh, kind of in some of the states doing mining, but just overall across the nation. Um, I think it's time to bring this up again and, and have that debate. Do you think it can be done safely, uh, sulfide mining today, given the technology that you just spoke of? I do. I do. I, you know, uh, Senator Tom Tiffany has done a lot of work on this and I think has reached out not only individually to, to legislators, but has made the case uh, with some of the environmental groups, uh, you know, people like George Meyer, Right. Who I thought, DNR secretary. right? I, a lot of people thought you'd never get George to a position where he could be supporting this, but he is right now. I mean, those are the types of things that we didn't see 20 years ago that we're seeing right now. Uh, we're hearing about crime legislation that, that could be a focus of what the Senate's going to do next. Uh, explain to us what exactly you're talking about. Senator Leah Vukmir has been working with uh, Representative San Filippo over the last, uh, boy, I'm going to say the last six months, if, if not even longer on a package that is specifically aimed towards uh, some of the, I'd say, chronic issues related to crime. Uh, not necessarily something that you say, okay, um, you know, we're going to be tougher on criminals. It's more about what's happening kind of behind the scenes and how those individuals that have been incarcerated, I should say arrested and then incarcerated, how they're handled. So there's about five or six bills that I think are going to move through both chambers. Uh, pretty quickly here, probably in the fall session. You, you've mentioned a couple pieces of legislation here that you think uh, both houses will be able to pass. Uh, and, and the question, I guess, is you, you saw Speaker Voss on this program last week. He referred to yeah. uh, a few members, three members of, of your caucus as terrorists. Uh, he later apologized for using that word, but he didn't really apologize for the larger point, which he says is that you've got a small group of senators who can basically hold the budget process hostage. What's your, what's your response to his larger point? You know, I've disagreed with him on the idea that anybody held anybody um, hostage in this process. Um, it, you know, it's as old as the Capitol. After a, a budget passes either house, uh, the process starts where you begin to lobby the governor for maybe a veto on a specific item. 
or uh, to not touch something with the veto pen. So that, that's always been part of the process. I think he was a little bit miffed in the way that uh, that was handled in the Senate uh, with discussions going between the governor's office, myself, and those senators to try and get the votes for the budget. That process can always be revisited, and I've always been an advocate for, listen, if we need more autonomy in each house, let's change the rules, let's Do you think the rules should be changed? Stuff. I do. I think that you know we need to be flexible in that area. Uh, the independence of each body needs to be maintained. Uh, on the speaker's comments, I think you described them as beyond inappropriate. I think that was the, the, the language you used to describe them. Uh, the question I have is, there does seem to be some, at least to a casual observer, some friction uh, between the two bodies. And, and, and how real is that? And how much does it threaten the Republican legislative agenda? Oh, I think, you know, there's always differences between the houses. And, and for a lot of different reasons, sometimes it's personalities. Sometimes it's just, you know, one house moving a little bit quicker than the other on some initiatives. But um, at the end of the day, I mean, the one thing that I can tell you is when you have one party control like we have right mm -hmm. now, there are a number, uh, the vast majority of items are worked out kind of with the other leader, with the other members of the finance team, the other members of the leadership teams. Uh, it's very cordial. We see each other all the time in the circles that we move in, and it never is as bad as it typically sounds, I think, when you read about some of the media accounts. So I think we're, in, we're, we're okay. We're in a good place. And I think this fall agenda, there's, there's, a lot of, uh, there's a lot of things that we're working on together that ultimately will make it to the governor's desk. Senate Majority Leader Scott Fitzgerald, always good to have you on the program. Thank Appreciate you. Appreciate your time today. Good Thank to be with you. you. Milwaukee's new downtown arena is now more than 60% complete. We'll go inside and talk naming rights and ticket sales with Bucks President Peter Fagan. That's next on Upfront.